on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and YouTube channel. Is it? How's the zoom on it? All right, we're playing we with some different. We're playing with some different stuff on YouTube. No, no, no. no. Right. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Hey, I take it when I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a different view tonight. I've uh, installed an app on my phone. We'll see if that works any better. Um, you guys, my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy, and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, at 6 p.m. in California, where we are. My husband, Sean, is here behind the camera. He's going to help us answer any questions as we go, and we are going to paint tonight. Really quick, over on YouTube, uh, Angie, let me know if the uh, view looks good. Yeah, uh, we're trying something a little different tonight. Um, but first, before I get started on paint, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what I have going on here. And um, I was super excited because over on my Facebook page, I posted a picture of this piece today. And uh, Denny, who's the manager at the Redesign with Prima store in Temecula, California, he totally got my vision. And I was super happy somebody understood where I was going with it. My inspiration is Cabinet of Curiosities, a little dark, a little mysterious. Can you guys kind of see what I'm thinking here? Um, so what I did here is I applied, uh, we did a base coat on this piece last week. Uh, I do have a coat of primer underneath that. And then we also cast, there's a piece of misting molding here. That's what we did last week. And I just put a quick base coat on here. Um, so I cast some Redesign with Prima molds, and I've got, I think, seven different molds that I cast here between all the different frames. Um, I'll list some. I brought some out here. I've got Astrid, which is the circle frames, and then that's also got some squares in it. So that's an Astrid. That's an Astrid. Um, I've got Baroque frames, which is square. So this is Baroque frames. This one... Uh, I think that's all the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I think, is. My little eye uh, spies. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of molds on here. Okay, I've got some Blackwood Manor, which I only have a couple. Of that was this one, and this one down here are Blackwood Manor. I've got Grungy Frames, which is this circle here. Uh, I got a smaller one here. Um, yeah, let's see. This is a Grungy Frame. Anyway, so there's probably, that was like four that I listed, and I know I've got at least two or three more that I used on here, uh, including the keyholes and then some of the different frames that I didn't point out to you guys. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> she says her guess was, take a picture, it'll last longer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? Okay, there picture you go. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is this is one of the new uh, transfers from Redesign with Prima, and this one is called Collector's Closet. Uh, this is the design here. Good old YouTube. Feels and, like they're looking at a uh, helicopter. At first, I thought I was going to use the larger transfer in this collection, which is this guy. But I got the smaller one, and I think the smaller one is actually going to work better for me. So I'm going to save the larger one for another piece. Um, this collection has the two different transfers in it, uh, a whole bunch of new molds. It's also got a paper. This is the paper. That's the design for that really cool collection. And so where, what I'm going to do is we'll give this some paint tonight to kind of cover up the white on these frames, get it all unified. And then I'm going to take the transfer and each of these frames is going to get something in it from the transfer. Angie says it looks like a mishmash of bumper stickers. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just write inside of them with a Sharpie or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> like namaste. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what California or bus, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to take the the transfer and like so. Here's a little potion bottle, and each of these frames, there's some bugs, you know. And I'll have to be very thoughtful. I think we'll do this together next week because I'll have to be very thoughtful when I'm placing these by what fits in what frame and what do I have that could fit somewhere else, uh, so that I maximize the usage of my transfer. Um, and I only cut up what, you know, what I need to cut up. So that's kind of, I think what we're going to do next week is we'll, we'll place inside of our frames. But this week we're going to work on the paint finish. And because my uh, inspiration for this being Cabinet of Curiosities, did you guys watch that show? It was on Netflix. We watched it. I probably slept through it. Um, did you? No, you, I, I think you know. watched I it. It was, it, it was episodes. So it was. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. It's, uh, yeah. it's kind of dark and 
it's it's very dark. Yeah, the whole idea of Cabinet of Curiosities is very dark. There's also a podcast that uh, that we stream sometimes called Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, and it's the same concept, but, you know, a little dark, but I think it's really timely because Halloween is right around the corner. How scary is that? Oh my gosh, we're on, in July. I heard on the radio the other day that uh, Christmas is only five months away. Oh, you sound like spring. Yeah, I mean, I don't celebrate like that, but I was like, oh crap. She drives me that's, nuts. That's more of what I spring, if you're on. Was, yeah. was a panic. <laughs> so let me talk to you guys a little bit about my placement of these molds, because even in my most random thing, there's always, always thought that goes behind it. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how I chose placement of these. Um, so I've got hardware on here, and this is my hardware. I'll pull it off so you guys can see it better. Those are my poles that are going to go on the piece. So my thought was, in some places, I want the poles themselves to be the frame. So I didn't, I left some unframed spots. So here, 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 and here. Now pay attention to that because it's one on the top drawer, one on the second, one on the third, one on the fourth. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah, and then I've got like these two here give balance to each other. This is a big frame, the Lucian mold that I put on its side, and because they're on the outer edges and they give balance to each other out there. Ooh, there's a lot of thought and randomness. Um, there is symmetry in everything. So I've got um, some of my frames actually will fit my hardware in it. So I've got one down here that the hardware itself will have a frame. And I did one up here. So those are going to give balance to each other, whereas these will have no frame on them. So even in even in the most random placement, there was thought that went behind it. And then aside from that, I just tried to kind of fill in some spots. And so I can go around and look for anywhere that I want, you know, just to fill in. And I cast some, just the, the small guys that are inside the molds, and I cast some of those. So I'll show you what I mean by filling in. Where I feel like there's empty spots, I can place some of these smaller items. So I usually start with my larger first, and I use those to kind of ground my piece, and then I can come back and fill in with some of these smaller guys. I'm going to go in. Your I did use my hardware. It's just dry fit in here. It doesn't have any screws on it. But by doing that, I can make sure that none of my frames interfere with my hardware at all. Um, I placed most of these on last night because I, we are going to paint today. And I would recommend you do want your glue fully dry before you put these on. Because painting over these with wet glue is going to kind of not be fun tonight. Well, if I get close enough, I can see what you're thinking. Yeah? Yeah. Is it interesting? Well, if you have my hairline, I'd really see what you're okay, thinking. Okay, so this guy doesn't really fit anywhere, so it prob I probably won't have a place for this one. Um, and I just put glue on it, of course. And I'm, this is resin. This is. These are cast and amazing casting resin. Um, I used... Do you want to go over to my resin station? No, no, really. really. That silicone pouring cup that's no. over there? No, no. I want to I mean, explain if you're asking. how I poured all these because I think it looks a little overwhelming, but it's actually. You can't be nice when the camera's on because you don't usually ask me. You're very demanding. Okay, so I'll fill that hole there. Just stuck glue on my leg. That's fun. Okay, so this is uh, my silicone uh, pouring cup, and I filled this three different times. But I filled it all the way up, and because I was pouring seven different molds, I just moved very quickly, and I did three pours in this size cup. So that gives you an idea how much resin I used, and I had it full to right about here with the mixture. And you guys know if you've ever used casting resin, once you mix them, you've got to move fast, and that's a lot of resin to get into those molds. You only have about like two minutes to pour it all. So I mixed it get it in the molds and doing this many you I had to move very very quickly so the other option is just to mix smaller batches and then you can be a little more cautious with your um, with your pouring but that was how much resin I used so I filled in a spot here I'm gonna wipe away some of this excess glue how did my clean shirt get out here oh sorry I just uh, ran in and got it out of the laundry real quick so this is kind of what I did is I just went back and I filled in with some of these smaller guys and having my hardware there helps me to see so that I don't interfere with my poles. And some of these, like I don't want to mess up my, you know, I could add a framer on my hardware, but then I feel like I need to add one somewhere else to kind of add back that symmetry. I don't want to mess that up. 
uh, it can, you know, even if you don't realize it, it can start to look unbalanced. I feel like the word of the day is symmetry. Symmetry. Can you use that in a sentence? No. <laughs> I think I just did. <laughs> All right, so that's just kind of filling in with some of these uh, smaller frames. And I then guess just I could show the people sure, on Facebook what you're doing. Making sure that my um, hardware is not going to interfere with them. So I have one that I haven't used, but it's not going to fit. Yep, it doesn't fit. So this is kind of like what I'll have to do next week when we go ahead and put stuff inside of the um, frames is I'm gonna to have to be really thoughtful about where everything goes. I could add a circle, but then I lose my balance. So I do have one of these guys that will go unused. All right, as far as my paint finish, I put these blues on, um, but then I really liked them. And I was gonna let it be an under layer, but now I feel like I want it to kind of go on top. So I'm gonna reverse my order on this. And that means that I'm gonna put greens on here. So we're gonna paint in some greens. I'm going to show you the two, co two coats I intend to do. So the two colors I'm going to open up, I'm using Wise Owl Paint. And I'm opening up Foxtrot, which is an a olive green. And Spanish Olive, which is an olive green. No, I'm kidding. It's more of a, it's got a lot more yellow in it. Okay, but that yellow is going to be kind of electric showing through underneath these blues because now I'll make the blues will sort of will be my overcoat. So I'm going to go in and I'm using a big floppy brush. This is an Annie Sloan brush. I don't need to get full coverage because if some of those blues show through because it's going to be a layered finish anyways and it's going to have blues in it. Hey, thank you to whoever sent stars. Sorry, the oh, comments you. and everything were flying by. So this is an Annie Sloan brush. I like that it's got such long bristles on it. Guacamole with cheese. So it's, yeah, it, it is the color of guacamole, but I'm gonna tell you something. This has become one of my favorite colors and not because I would ever do a furniture piece in it on its own, but it is a great accent color. It's, um, it adds a little bit of brightness to some, some of your colors when they're feeling kind of dark and dingy. So I've been using Spanish olive a lot. Um, and that surprises me because this is not normally a color, but as an accent color, not a full body color, it's a great color. Wow, so, that's really close up on you. Let's go ahead. And... I'm using sort of a tapping motion. Now this is a natural bristle brush, which means being hard on it like this, it'll have a tendency to lose some, lose more bristles, bristles than a synthetic bristle brush. I also need to remember which of these I uh, just recently applied because they'll be more likely to move Sorry. because my glue is still wet. So I'm not getting full coverage on this. I still have spots where my blues are showing through, but that's okay. I'm using the stippling motion because I have so much texture and surfaces that I need to get inside of. All these frames have details on them. And so I'm trying to get into all of that at the same time I'm covering the body behind it. So this part is not fun when you've got to paint over this many moldings. Um, texture, I mean, cause this is gonna be kind of that dark, I, I, I don't, I, I'm gonna say, I'll say grungy. Let's say grungy, a little bit grungy. Cause I think I might add a little bit of oranges to this and some rest tones. Um, like I, oh, see, see what so I mean? Too I had close. A, I don't wanna you're not in there. I had a wet, I had some wet glue there. I totally recommend if you're adding paint, make sure your glue is fully, fully dry. Adding those couple tonight that I did with you guys is totally gonna Sorry, be a disservice to me while I'm trying to get this paint on, but we're gonna work with it. Everywhere else my glue is dry, except for I think I added like three or four small molds to me. If you had one center pull, you think you'd be able to open that drawer instead of having two, one on each side? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. The other thing I thought that would be kind of cute would be to put, have my regular hardware, right? That That's on here, which where are my pools at? Is it on here? And, <laughs> yeah, see, okay, and then just take some random knobs and put one inside here and put one inside here and put, you know, so it had just random pulls everywhere. I thought that would kind of go with the 
the whole cabinet of curiosities theme also would just be to use hardware inside my frames. Um, and that's another idea I love all these frame designs for is to use them as hardware backs. I can paint inside here gold or add gold leafing or something and I can make it look like it's a hardware back. Any of these frame designs would work for that. Okay, so I kind of went around the center and now I'm gonna go around the outside edge. And I'm gonna choose a little bit of smaller brush for this because I have less area to cover. And this is, uh, the color is Foxtrot. And I'm just gonna kind of work them together, but I'm still using that stippling motion, another natural bristle brush, which I swear I just washed these last night, but they will lose bristles. And just trying to get into all these frames. I'm gonna bring those blues back. So uh, my thought is that you probably don't need to have the blues underneath like I do. In this case, I did that coat last week. I'm just gonna let it work to my benefit and it'll be another layer but for efficiency, if you were painting this and, and this is something that like, um, you know, the artists that you follow kind of do for you is they work out all the kinks in a finish, like what works best, what's the most sensible way to get there. So in this case, I'm working out a kink and that is that I should have started with the greens and not the blues like I did. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for that. I was just trying to work out kinks for you guys. So I want to work some of this Spanish olive into the foxtrot. So I'm going to make an area where they overlap. Getting a lot of brush hairs coming out of my brush. Natural bristles are fun. I could do this with synthetic because I'm just doing this sort of tapping motion, but I, I like the uh, looseness of these bristles is getting into. And I hate stippling with my Klingon brushes because it's really hard on them. Do you find that sometimes, uh, good question, Susan, sometimes the paint doesn't stick to the molds very well? Um, it, uh, Wysel does pretty good, but it can depend on your paint. So like one hour enamel is gonna get different type of coverage. Then this is the Wysel chalk synthesis paint. It can depend on your paint. If you're worried about that at all, um, um, you can prime your molds. Just put a spray primer on them. Super easy to do. But uh, one of the reasons I like working with Wysel, now I'm not exclusive to Wysel. I can use whatever brand of paint that I want to use. I choose to use it because it blends really well, has good coverage. They have a full complete line that I like using. Um, I like working with the company themselves. That was important to me. Um, but it does not reactivate quickly. A lot of brands have that reactivation feature. And when you're trying to blend or overwork paint or add water to it, and it wants to reactivate, I don't, I don't think that with my painting style, it's actually not a feature that's a benefit to me. Uh, a high reactivation. It, it actually drives me nuts, to be honest with you. Paints that reactivate really easily because I end up trying to blend them and like I would be coming back over this with another coat and it's gonna wanna try to pull the coat underneath. So reactivation to me is super frustrating. Um, so we're gonna do a second coat. I'll, I'll turn this in a minute and I already have this coat done on the side and so I'll show you the next coat and I'll show you what I mean. That I did that coat yesterday and it's already dry enough that I can come back and it's not gonna reactivate and pull my paint. But already, I love this in the green. Down here, I'm just gonna do a solid color on the base. I didn't add any molds down here. I'm just gonna let it have a nice dark base. I'll let some of that blue peek through so I don't really care if I have full coverage. I do wanna cover the white of the molds. I find that uh, if I'm doing two coats of paint, two coats of paint covers the white resin just fine. The only time I really feel like I need to prime my molds is if I'm glazing them or doing something that's gonna have a lot of rubbing over the top. So when you apply glaze, you have to wipe it back and that requires that you rub over the top. I know this is a wet mold right here, so I'm gonna tap at it instead of rubbing at it. I, have, I still have some white spots here, but that's okay because I still have my coat of the blues that I'm gonna do over the top of this. So I've got a whole nother coat of paint if there were spots in my white that I missed. 
And then I'm also going to decorate these frames once all my paint is dry. It's kind of a nice paint finish though because it doesn't require me to be super precise. I will also, you guys notice I'm painting with my drawers and I always at the end, I always come back and make my insides and my body match. So I will fully take the drawers out, paint around all the drawer edges and inside the frame of the furniture piece itself. You just prefer to paint with your drawers on. Yeah. <laughs> but do you really though? <laughs> I mean, if people don't start watching my YouTube channel pretty quick, then That's what it's, we're, we're going to get, ship, we're gonna get, a, little, we're gonna get a little desperate. <laughs> yeah, do I want to tell them about the loan you had this week? No. <laughs> What was the title? I mean, it wasn't my law. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you got to uh, be careful about. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> what was the title? The job title, though. Uh, uh, video, video producer. Only fans being called video producers. It's like, okay, that's creative. Yes, you do produce video. So if you see me change my job title all of a sudden, you know I stepped it up, okay guys? You know I'm Well not... over there it's sprayed by Sean. <laughs> yeah. What we're gonna do is You know I'm not making enough money on uh, <laughs> on YouTube. I gotta move to other platforms. Yep. Um I am gonna do a wood stain top on this. I'm letting my paint get up onto the edge because I need to come back and uh re-sand it anyways. So I'll do my top last. The other option is doing it first, which I actually think is a better recommendation. Um, but this is a do as I say, not as I do type of channel. Huh. Okay. All right, so even this is a really cool finish and I, you can see how it just kind of unifies those frames. They blend more into the background now and it's not as in your face as the white frames were. I'm gonna miss the side of this. That one's wet. And up here. Okay, so that's my basic base coat that I want to get on this piece. But then, through the magic of television, I can turn this. You just did this? It's like when, you, um, when you're when you watching a cooking show and they go into the oven and it magically has the casserole already done. It's uh, because they set it and forget it. <laughs> and if you order now... Okay. I think it's wrong that I even know the company. <laughs> yeah, what company, what company is that? Wrong Co. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like that totally dude came up with all kinds of stuff. All the infomercials that used to be on. Okay, so now I'm going to open back up my blues. And this is what I had on the base on the front. But I'm going to put them over top of my greens and let some of those greens peek through. So let me pop these guys open. These are the colors you saw me work with last week, but now I'm now I'm doing gonna, it for real. Now you're just going to reapply? So the three colors I'm using are Poseidon is going to be my dark blue. I'm using Siren Song and Deep Turquoise. So this is Siren Song and Deep Turquoise. My lid for my um, Poseidon oh, thank is, you, Paula. is clean. We're adorable together. Oh. Yeah. Aww. I'm going to need a double. I need a stand in. Um, me and Sean are coming up on our 20 year wedding anniversary. What? Yeah. Surprise. Let's see. I'm trying to think about this. Which do I want to start with? I'm going to start with my siren song and a big floppy brush. And I'm going to be super messy putting this on because I want some of these greens to show through. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to pull this back and thin my paint out. I want to keep this wet because I'm going to... You'll see how this comes together. I'll try to kind of explain it as I go, but I have to kind of work fast because I don't want my paint to dry. I'd actually like to not have to redo this again. Oh, Cindy's back just for a minute. Good oh, deal. Hi, That's Cindy. when you're addicted. That's cool. Where'd she go? I don't know. She said she could only come a little bit ago. Only she, she could only come on for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna. This is my brush for my Spanish olive. I didn't add any paint to it, but I'm gonna kind of work it into that siren song. And then I'll come back with my brush for my siren song. So I've got the Spanish. Oh, uh, sweet Jesus. I've got the Spanish olive sort of peeking through that siren song. And now my Poseidon is going to come around these edges. 
Tammy, I'm going to officially ban you from the page. Uh-oh. What yep. did Tammy do? How many years has it been since he married your sister? Oh, oh, I don't even remember what year that was. You remember? You do have No, that, I, do I really blocked that out. Do you have really. that on your calendar? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We oh, lived gosh. in Sacramento. I think it was before the kids were born. Was it? Yeah, because Noah wasn't with us, right? Oh, I don't know. My, son, feels, my oldest son's 15. I'd say it feels like eternity, but it's just never long enough. <laughs> Whereas with me, he always says it feels like just yesterday. It's just yesterday. Yeah. yeah. All right. And this is my brush for my siren song. Thanks, Tammy, for the backhanded slap. But I'm really... letting everything overlap. I'm adding water so my coats are really thin and, you can, and it's pulling so I, ha I can see the greens that I have underneath. Oh, Liz is trying to get brownie points. She loves our wedding pic. <laughs> We're almost at the point where there should be laser lights in the background. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. It's to the point that our wedding photos are on film, not digital. How about that? Uh, we got married right when digital photography was just... It was. I remember because we, we got our, our first digital camera was a wedding present. <laughs> And we took it on our honeymoon and thought it was like the coolest thing ever that like you got the you got Came the, with photo. the backpack. You got yeah. the photo right away. Whoa, technology. Yeah. <laughs> so this year uh, we are going to celebrate because we go to the UK next month. And this is my brush for my Spanish olive. I'm just kind of working that out again. So I got some overlap. Okay, and then I'm going to take a rag. And I'm going to lay some of this off to kind of bring through some of those under layers even more. Add some kind of pattern in there. So it looks a little, yeah, I kind of like that. And then I'm gonna come down here and get some of these legs with my blue, but not super evenly. Oh, sure, you totally. Well, this will Holy be... crime, any Brenda, 41 years last week. Wow. That's incredible. That no even... offense, but I am kind of a smart aleck. So were your wedding pictures drawn? <laughs> yeah, just caricatures. <laughs> Before right. film was made. So that's my paint finish. So once the greens are dry on the front, that's what I'm going to come do over the front of this. So let's see. I already did this other side, too. And I'm going to leave the sides with just the paint finish because I um, I want the focus to be all about the front of this piece. And I feel like if I added the frames all the way around, it would just be way too busy. And you guys are probably like, uh, I don't know if you've seen the front, Brady, but it's already way too busy. Man, you know, in all seriousness, I think of this 41 years. And and you can't wait till we get there? Wow. You don't know. Oh, they both uh, Air, in Air Force uniform. Wow. Well, thank you. That's so cool. Thank you for your service. Um, yeah, no, our, our anniversary is next month, our 20 year, and um, and we go to the UK next month. So wow. we're, take, we're Sherry taking Jim our kids. And, Sherry and Jim, 44 years. Oh, that's so some, cool. I'm <laughs> film photography. <laughs> <laughs> Are you bragging? Oh. <laughs> Sure, you should totally paint on the side that the camera can't see. Sorry. It only makes sense when you're <laughs> it's on camera. It's because I turned it like this, and, I, and then I can see a different angle. Whereas this was this this was the side that was away from me before. The other thing I'm seeing is on this side, I have a little bit less of the green. So I'm going to come back to this one because I want them to match. I don't know. Maybe they're... No, I guess it's okay. Okay. When I first turned that, it looked like maybe they weren't a good match. Doing it again? <laughs> no, Louie, it says, and she may be right, you don't know, but she says her wedding photographer had a black sheet over his head. That's like the old reverse negative days. Whoa, yeah. But I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> I mean, for whatever reason, if he did, it was something different. Is there a screwdriver you... over there? What? Anyway? Bueller. There you go. My uh, paint can opener won't open my drawers because I was going to show you guys how I will come back and get. Um, and I try to do this while my paint is still fresh because if you let, if I let the paint puddle and it dries, um, then I do come back and sand it. I always do. I don't leave globs of paint. I'm really big on the inside of my piece being just as nice as the outside. I don't think 
like a customer should ever be vacuuming and seeing where I missed spots. So I will turn them on their backs. I take the drawers out. I make sure the glides open. If they don't and I and paint dried while I was blending, I will just take it out and sand that spot. Uh, drawers are wood for a reason because that's the best possible material they could be. Wow, Donna, 52 years in August. What day in August, just out of curiosity? Yeah, that. Oh, we're in August too, so I wonder how close they are. Thanks for the spoiler. All right, you guys. So, um, I told you guys we would be in the UK. That is going to be for the Painters Business Academy. That's September 1st through 3rd. It's in Surrey. There are still tickets available. If anyone is across the pond, we will have, oh, Klingon Brushes will be there. Uh, Primo will be there. Redesign with Primo will be there. Um, we will have Annie Sloan and Kacha and Jonathan Mark Mendez will be there with me, which we had a blast last year. So when they asked me back, I was over the moon excited. It was a really well done show. It's a combination of paint techniques. I, I can tell you exactly. Oh, no, there we go. Oh, you're okay. fine. I'm sorry. Um, I'm glad you got the drawer open. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I was gluing one of the molds, I did get, yep, yeah, I can see it right here. Like there's a little spot of glue. Can you see that? Yeah. And I knew it when it happened. So that's what I ran So you into. added more? So, yeah. But I, these drawers will end up coming out and this little, it's just a little tiny nub right here. And I can just pick that off and that'll solve that problem. But I do, you guys, I, even if you don't always see it on camera, cause time is always limited, right? But I'm a firm believer that uh, a furniture piece should appeal to all of your senses. It should smell good. It should look good. It should feel good if you run your hand over it. So um, I will go ahead and get this cut up to where we got onto the side with the blues on it. And next week when we come back, we will start filling and decorating some of these frames. Okay, so we'll keep going on the same piece. And then um, I will wrap this all together for you guys into a YouTube tutorial when we're all done with it. But that's where we are right now. I'm going to finish up the blues, get this matching the sides, and we'll come back next week and finish the paint. Um, you guys check out the Painters Business Academy. I'm super excited to go. It's a great show. It's really well done. September 1st through 3rd. Uh, also check out my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please uh, hit that subscribe button. I do a weekly tutorial over there. And this week my tutorial is going to be the Paisley piece that I did for the Redesign with Prima release. It came out really pretty. Uh, it's already sold, so it's crazy popular. Went rapid fast, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, it has a cool paint finish and then using a brand new transfer. Um, some cool techniques in there. So you guys check out my YouTube channel, that'll come up tomorrow. And click that subscribe button because I do put out a new tutorial over there uh, every Friday. I try to hit every Friday. <laughs> There's been a few I've missed. It's not very common though. And, uh, and other than that, I will let you guys go and I hope everyone has a great weekend and come back next week and we'll finish filling these frames up.